Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Greetings. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Whatever time it is you find yourself. I just wanted to jump on here real quick and do a live, uh, impromptu live. I was outside walking today and, um, <clears throat> and just enjoying the fresh air. It's a little breezy, a little cool, but nevertheless, I was walking and I heard this song in my ear and I, I was hearing this song. So I was playing the song, listening to the song. So I just wanted to come on live <clears throat> to encourage someone else. Um, as God was encouraging me today in the name of Jesus, as you see the topic or title of this was reckless love. <clears throat> so I thank God today. He was speaking to me about reckless love. And God said, my love for you, my love for my children is reckless. So I looked up <clears throat> reckless in the dictionary. Reckless means marked by lack of proper caution, careless of consequences. And we certainly know. I said, okay, God, what are you saying here? Because you're not a careless God. We know this. <clears throat> but God said... <clears throat> It is regardless of the consequences to our enemies. It is regardless of what happens in the process. God says he wants you to know today. He wants you and I to know that he loves us. <clears throat> Marked by lack of proper caution. God said, I'm throwing caution to the wind. You know, that's a term we use. We throw caution to the wind. In other words, God is saying today, whatever it takes. And the song talks about there's no mountain he won't climb up. There's nothing God won't do to come after us. I want you to know today that there's nothing God won't do to bring your healing. There's nothing God won't do to bring your deliverance. There's nothing God won't do to bring the promises to pass that he has spoken over your life in the name of Jesus because God has a reckless love. It is a love that has gone beyond what we could even think or imagine. <clears throat> Excuse me. Isaiah 43 and 4 says, because you are precious in my sight, you are honored and I love you. I will give other men in return for you and other peoples in exchange for your life. This is an idea of how much God loves us. He said in his word that he will give men, other men in return for you. You see, we know that Jesus died on the cross. He gave his life in exchange for ours. He gave up his life and died that we might have life, that we might live abundantly in the name of Jesus. So today, I just came on here briefly to encourage you. Now I want to go into... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the synonyms for reckless, adventurous, which means a willingness to accept, but not necessarily imprudence. This I'm defining reckless so you understand what I'm talking about. God does not lack wisdom, which is improved. We know God does not lack wisdom, but God is saying, I'm willing to go out on a limb. I'm willing to step out on the limb for you. And we know that God, with God, all things are possible. We know that God is divine and sovereign, so it's not a risk for him. But he wants us to understand in the natural, if you were in a relationship with somebody or if you're doing something, you take a risk. You go out on the limb. That's what God is saying today. I'm going out a limb for you my son. I'm going out a limb for you, my daughter. The next synonym is daring, fearlessness in courting danger. In other words, God says, I'm going in and take the danger for you. I am protecting you, but I am going in after you. God says, I'm going into the mouth of the lion. And I'm going to give him lockjaw in the name of Jesus. I'm with you in the fiery furnace just like I was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Because his love for us is, is reckless. His love goes beyond our understanding. Another synonym for reckless is venturesome. Which implies a jaunty, which means self-confident eagerness for perilous undertakings. You see, God is going in on your behalf. God is fighting on your behalf. Whatever situation you're facing, whatever seems too difficult for you. Whatever seems dangerous, God is letting you know today because of his love. He said, I'm stepping into on the scene. I'm going in before you. Just like uh, um, David faced Goliath. That's a perilous situation. Just like Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego were in the fiery furnace. That's a perilous situation. <clears throat> Just as um, Daniel was in the lion's den. These are perilous situations, but God is saying, my reckless love, the love I have for you. I am stepping into these situations on your behalf in the name of Jesus. Another one is daring, which implies fearlessness in courting danger. Again, we are hearing the same thing. You see, because God said his love is reckless. I was listening to this song, Reckless Love, and I said, well, God, this is, you know, I know what it means, but I'm like the definition of reckless. I said, because you're not a reckless God. <clears throat> 
because we know God is all wise. But I said, let me sit and just look this up real quick before I get on here. So God is saying that he is going into dangerous situations, what appears dangerous to you and I, but it's not dangerous to God because he already has it worked out. He already knows our ending from before we even began in the name of Jesus. So I just want to encourage someone today to know that you that God is working on your behalf. God is fighting for you. God has a reckless love for us. Greetings to those who are just coming in. I just jumped on here to do a quick live. I wanted to share with you the last meaning that I have for the word reckless is foolhardy which means inconsistent with good sense because we know that God is not foolhardy but God did say, I will take the foolish things to confound the wise. In other words, what God is about to do for us doesn't make sense in the natural. What God is about to do for you and I is not, we can't analyze it. We can't rationalize it. We have to embrace it and know that God is moving on our behalf in the name of Jesus. So my question today is, what is it you're believing God for? I just want you to understand that the love God has for us. What kind of love is this? That God gave his only son, his very begotten son. We just got through celebrating Resurrection Sunday. This is the kind of love God has for us. He put himself in danger. He put himself in harm's way that we might be free, that we might be healed, that we might be delivered and set free in the name of Jesus. He took on sickness and disease that you and I might be healed. He took on poverty that we might be wealthy, that we might walk in abundant life. So today, whatever God has promised you, whatever God has spoken, know that the love of God shall bring you through. The love of God shall deliver you because he has his eyes on you. He said in Isaiah 43 and 4 that he would give men in exchange for us. That means we are valuable to God. There's already been an exchange that took place. Jesus put his life on the line. He gave his life in exchange for our life. Glory be to God. What kind of love is that? That's what I call reckless love in the name of Jesus. It's that kind of love that doesn't mind putting itself in harm's way. It's the kind of love that says, hey, I'm putting myself on the line. I'm putting myself at risk and we know he wasn't at risk because he's God but we're trying to use natural terms so you can understand the love that God has for you and I this is the kind of love God says he has for you what is it that's too hard for God what is it that God won't do if he already gave his life for you Today, I want you to be encouraged and know that God has a love for you that is beyond comprehension. He has a love for you and I that is beyond our understanding. But that love took him to the cross. And that love gives us victory and power over our enemies in the name of Jesus. A reckless love. When you get a chance... Um, you can check out the song by Corey Asbury, Burry, I believe it is, called Reckless Love. God was speaking this thing to me, like I said, and he said, this is what my people need to know. It's a reckless love. It's a love that will do anything. It's a love that will go to move heaven and earth for you. It's a love that goes beyond your comprehension. It is a love that will put him on an old rugged cross and sacrifice his life to hang, bleed, and die that we might have abundant life in the name of Jesus. So today, if you need a healing, know that God... God has already paid the price for your healing. Today, if it's a financial issue, God has promised to supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. God has a reckless love. His love for us is beyond comprehension. He went to the ends of the earth for us. In the natural, when you're in a relationship and you really love somebody, love can cause you to be kind of reckless. Love causes you to throw caution to the wind. You're all in. You put everything on the line. You put things at risk. Love will cause you to get in harm's way. Let's use the example for uh, in the natural of a parent and their child. A parent will do anything for their baby. A parent will do anything for their child. You will put yourself in harm's way that that child might be protected. That that child might not have to go through things you've had to go through in life. You will sacrifice your money that your child might have a better life. You will sacrifice whatever it takes. You will stay up and have sleepless night. If that child is sick, you stay up to take care of that baby, to take care of that child, to nurse that child back to health in the name of Jesus. And this is what God is saying for us on today. Our heavenly father, our father, our daddy, our father is saying that I will do whatever it takes to take care of my children, to take care of my sons and daughters in the name of Jesus. God is saying whatever it takes. It's a reckless love. It's a love that goes out on a limb. It's a love that throws caution to the wind. It's a love that says I will be right there with you in the fiery furnace. It is a love that says if you make your bed in hell, God says I am there according to Psalm 139. Why? Because he loves us.
And because he loves us, there is nothing he won't do for us. Today, God wants you to know that there is nothing that he will not do for you. What, who can separate us from the love of God? <clears throat> for I am persuaded. Are you persuaded today that neither life, nor health, nor things past, nor things to come, principalities, nor powers, but nothing by any means shall separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. So today, know that God loves you. And because he loves you, he is coming through on his promises over your life in the name of Jesus. Tap into the love of God today. Embrace the love of God today. God says he loves you with an unfathomable love. We can't conceive the love God has for us. So I just want Want to come on here to encourage those who are feeling a little discouraged for those who have, you know feel like God has forgotten them God is you know God are you hearing my prayers God has not forgotten you God has heard your prayers and God is coming through on your behalf God is orchestrating behind the scenes for somebody right now to bring to pass the things that he has spoken you may not see it it may not feel like it's coming to pass it may not look everything might look just the opposite it might be topsy-turvy in your life but that's an indication that God is moving because remember that enemy always presents lies. He always tries to bring illusion to get us to think that what God promised is not coming to pass. He wants to make God out to look like a liar, but we know that the devil is truly the liar and the word of God is truth. God's very character is truth and love. God cannot fail. He cannot lie. So whatever God spoke to you today, God is surely bringing it to pass in the name of Jesus. So God, we thank you today for a new understanding of your reckless love for us in the name of Jesus. We thank you that God, you are are throwing caution to the wind. You will do whatever it takes to bring to pass your promises in our life. Somebody needs to understand that today, that no matter how dark and bleak your situation is, God says, I'm right there with you. God says, I'm coming through on your behalf. I don't care if your father was a warlock and your mother is a witch. God says, I can come through for you because of the bloodshed on Calvary. Your victory is already ensured in the name of Jesus. God is right there with you. There is no power that can overtake you in Christ, but you through Christ. Christ have power over all of your enemies in the name of Jesus. So know today that God is a loving God. Know today that God is coming after whatever he said for you, God is coming. He is coming. He is dealing with your enemies. The Bible says, I will contend with those that contend with you and I will trouble those who trouble you. God is troubling some, sending some trouble to the camp of the enemy today on your behalf in the name of Jesus. So we thank God on today for all he has done. We thank God that because he has a reckless love, that he is coming through for us. That he put himself in harm's way. He threw caution to the wind for us. I want you to understand what I'm saying here. So we thank God today for what he has spoken. I just want you to be encouraged to know if you um, didn't catch this from the beginning, please go back and catch it from the beginning. It's short and quick, but I want you to understand as I, like I said, I was walking today and God just started speaking to me about his love for his people and how he is coming through for his, uh, for his people, his promises for his people. And this is not a next year kind of thing. God said, I'm coming through for my people in this season. I'm coming through my for my people now. I am working things out on your behalf, on my behalf, for my sons and daughters. God said, I am working it out in the name of Jesus. God says he's coming through. He is orchestrating and moving behind the scenes. We can't understand it. We don't comprehend it. We may not even see it, but God says, if you just believe me, trust me, and hold on to the promises that I've given you, I am coming through. When has God ever lied? When has God ever not come through. We have 66 books in the Bible and there is not one story in the Bible where God did not come through on a promise. There is not one story, not one person in the Bible that God ever let down or fail in the name of Jesus. So guess what? God is not going to change now. God's character is faithful. The fact that the sun rises every day is an indication of the faithfulness of God in the name of Jesus. So because God is a faithful God, because God cannot lie, he cannot fail, he is coming through on his promises. Why? Because he loves you and I. And I'm going to go back to my scripture before I get off here because he says because you are precious in my sight. Isaiah 43 and 4 you are honored and I love you. This is God talking to the people. This is God saying I love you. I will give other men in return for you and other people in exchange for your life. This is how valuable we are to God that God said he would give other peoples in exchange for your life. In this, in this plural, in the Amplified Version, it says I will give other peoples. You see that network that's been trying to come against you? That group, that demonic gathering that's come against you? Guess what? God says I will give 
other men, I mean other peoples in exchange for your life. That tells you the value of your life to God. God has his eyes on you. God says he will perfect that which concerns you. God said the very hairs on your head are numbered. He knows every detail of your life. Your trouble has a time in, but it also has a time out. And God says it's time for my people to come out. It is time for the world to know that I am God and I am real in the lives of my people. That's why he is coming through in this season and time in the name of Jesus. Because the world must see that God is is real. The world must know through the people of God that God is a true and living God. That God is faithful. The world doesn't go by what we say. The girl, the world goes by what they see. That's why God is coming through for you and I. That's why the money has to come. That's why the healing has to come. That's why the deliverance has to come. Because the world needs to see that it pays to serve the true and living God. It's not just in word, but God said, I'm coming through on behalf of my people. I'm giving testimonies in the name of Jesus. So I thank him today. I bless him today and I give him glory that you that the word says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. The weapon may have formed, but God said it shall not prosper. He took the sting out of that weapon in the name of Jesus. So we thank God today when he hung on that cross, he ensured our victory in the name of Jesus. So I give him glory and honor today. Remember that you are loved by God. God gave his life. It says, so for God so loved the world that he gave. What did he give? He gave his only begotten son. He didn't come to die on the cross. He came that we might live eternally with him. He came that we might be redeemed from the claws of the snatch uh, from the grips of hell. But he also came that we might have abundant life. When we get to heaven, this thing is settled. Abundant life. We live in some abundance down here on earth. We're going to live a good life down here on earth. We're going to have houses and lands down here on earth. We walking in healing and deliverance down here on earth. You see, everything is not heavenly. There are some things that God wants us to have down here on this earth as well and it's not being materialistic but God came there if anybody should have the seven bedroom house it should be a child of God if anybody is walking in billions of dollars let me help somebody renew your mind it should be the children of God we have to renew our minds and everything is not spiritual everything is not when we get to heaven no there's some blessings God has for you and I down here and I don't know about you but I'm gonna get every blessing every promise God has for me down here on this earth it might be a healing whatever it is you need there are some things that god is imparting to us down here on this earth it might be deliverance in your family god will do it in the name of jesus because that's the god we serve a god who loves us and be clear and i don't know why i'm staying on this but god wants us to have money somebody need to understand god wants us to prosper he says i would that you would prosper and be in good health even as your souls prosper <clears throat> now prosperity is not just money <clears throat> but money is a part of it because if we are kingdom financers if we are conduits of wealth for the kingdom how can we finance the kingdom without money how can we have revivals without money how can we travel the world to spread the gospel of jesus christ if we don't have money so it takes money for it see the world understands this concept but the kingdom of god needs to understand it is the enemy that wants us to think that there is something humble about being poor and being in lack but the devil is a liar because we're going to have abundant life because that's what God said he already paid the price on the cross for my wealth if you don't want yours I'm going to take my wealth in the name of Jesus I'm taking my wealth I'm taking my, uh, my, my health I'm taking my deliverance for my family I'm taking everything God promised me in these 66 books right here in the name of Jesus see I believe that everything God spoke in this word is a promise that is available to me if I enforce it through prayer declare decree and move by faith and trust God for it. So I pray that you all have a blessed day. Give God glory in all you do and remember that God loves you. I love you with the love of the Lord and we'll be back real soon. Be blessed.